Good morning, everybody. It's uh, Monday, September 16th, 524 a.m. Central Time. Grain markets are mixed to lower this morning. December corn futures down two at 411 and a quarter. November soybeans unchanged at 1006 and a quarter. December Chicago wheat down six and a quarter at 588. December Kansas City wheat down eight cents at 592. December spring wheat down eight and a quarter at 627 and a quarter. Let's start off with this rally in the wheat market. So wheat futures notched their third straight week of gains last week amid supply concerns. The rise was due to India's government reducing the volume of wheat stockpiles that traders and large retailers can maintain. The move suggests that supplies are tight and that the Indian government is trying to lower domestic prices by increasing available supply. Drought conditions in Russia and Ukraine have also generated fears about a lack of supply. Wheat futures also saw a bounce last week after Russia struck a Ukrainian vessel in the Black Sea, uh, transporting wheat to Egypt. So Bloomberg reporting or indicating that the India story has something to do with this. I think that would be a distant third in terms of reasoning. I think that the uh, geopolitical stuff that's going on with Russia and Ukraine is probably top of the list. And then the weather issues um, in Russia, Ukraine might be a close second. Kansas City wheat futures have rallied 77 cents from their August low to last week's high. That's a, a nice move when you look at the chart. We've kind of taken out some of our near-term trend resistance. You look at the weekly and it's still a disaster. I mean, Kansas City wheat futures peaked at you know $13 plus per bushel back in May of 2022, and we've lost almost $9 per bushel since then. So we're calling our way back. Three weeks of gains is is uh, great. We've got a lot of work to do. Um, I hope we can uh, kind of keep going here. We've got some specifics on all of this. The U.S. and Britain are considering allowing Ukraine to use long-range Western weapons. President Joe Biden met with Britain's prime minister last week to address the issue, despite Vladimir Putin's threats to attack the West if the weapons are approved. Putin has said that the approval would signal that NATO countries, the U.S. and European countries, are at war with Russia. Britain believes that Putin is bluffing with his threats and that Ukraine needs needs the weapons to defend itself. Biden, on the other hand, is still skeptical of the approval, fearing that the use of the long-range weaponry will escalate the war. As I understand it, as of this morning, the U.S. has not made a decision on this. Uh, somebody told me once about six months into the war, maybe it was a year into the war, that on a long enough timeline, Ukraine gets everything that it wants. And that may be true to some extent. So I don't know which way this is going to go, but I think that if you're a trader, fund manager, you're short the wheat market and you're looking at this stuff, you're saying, you know what, maybe maybe this is enough for me. Maybe I've had my fun and I should uh, move on and look elsewhere. I think that's a big part of what's going on in wheat futures. Russia and Iran's military ties are growing. The U.S. and U.K. are concerned that Moscow is providing Iran with classified information and technology. The sensitive material could help Iran build nuclear weapons. In return, Iran is allegedly supplying Moscow with ballistic missiles for its war with Ukraine. According to U.S. and U.K. officials, Iran's nuclear program has never been more advanced than it is today. Iran, of course, is claiming that it is not pursuing the production of nuclear weapons. So many Russia headlines today. So Russia, Iran are getting tight. Um, Then you got the U.S. talking about weapons or the West talking about weapons inside of Ukraine. We mentioned the drought in uh, Ukraine and also southern Russia last week. And this is all such a big deal because of this. The two countries combined, Russia and Ukraine, are projected to account for 29 percent of all global wheat exports. So when that 29% is at risk in any way, shape, or form, Um, the market will rally on that. And I think that the the large money manager is looking at this situation and again, saying, you know what, prices are pretty cheap. I rode this thing all the way down and uh, maybe now I've I've had my fun and and it's time to step to the sidelines. Uh, That being said, U.S. wheat is still not competitive on the export market and not really even close to being competitive. Russia is still the global price setter despite these issues, but uh, I think that speculators are going to speculate, and they're speculating that perhaps, perhaps there will be some problems in the Black Sea that uh, could change the dynamics. So if you guys have not checked out our premium content, you sure need to do so. Joe, can you tell me about some of last week's premium videos? Report day is a good day to be a premium subscriber. I do a USDA snapshot video. It's sent out within 15 minutes of the release generally, and it covers the high-level items. What did USDA say? What does it mean for the markets? Is it a market mover? What are the big headlines? That sort of thing. Jim Uriel was on Friday. He's on every other Friday. We do Macro Friday. We talked specifically about the U.S. consumer. Uh, What sort of shape are they in? 
we talked about uh, policy. We talk about the Fed. We talk about interest rates. We do mailbag questions that come in from subscribers about everything from land purchases to operating loans, that sort of stuff. Uh, if you guys want to see the premium stuff, go to standardgrain.com. You can sign up this morning. It's a $50 per month subscription. You can cancel at any time. No other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else. You'll get our morning email every single business day at 5 a.m. Central Time. It's a it's a grain market newsletter, but we include a whole bunch of other stuff. My cash grain marketing recommendations are included there. All of our premium videos are included. There. There's a new one every single day. Uh, give that deal a shot today, guys. The weather will remain hot and dry across much of Brazilian soybean country. Rainfall will be confined mostly to the country's southern states during the next two weeks. Temperatures are slated to run above normal during the next two weeks in many areas. Extended weather forecasts, however, continue to hint at the idea that rains will return to key central soybean areas during the first week of October and beyond. Long-term weather forecasts, of course, are often unreliable. I will be the first one to tell you that I don't like long-term weather forecasts and that anything past like six days is generally unreliable. But... I think the trade is looking at this. They're looking at this extended stuff. These maps on my screen, if you're watching, this is the Euro um, Ensemble, which is a conglomeration of a whole bunch of, of weather models. And it goes, uh, they have them all the way out through, you know, the end of October almost. And the indication right now is that, yeah, you're going to see the rains kind of shift uh, further east during the first and second week of October. And then you're going to be in a full-blown kind of wetter pattern by the end of October. Again, is this reliable? I don't know. Could this be part of the reason that the soybean market and the, the little rally kind of ran out of gas uh, last week and into this week? Yeah, it, it absolutely could be. Fund traders have trimmed their net short positions in the corn and soybean markets. CFTC released weekly commitment of traders data on Friday. During the week ending September 10th, the funds were net buyers of 41,000 contracts of corn. The net short of 147,000 contracts of corn is the smallest since the last week of May. Funds were also net buyers of 26,000 contracts of soybeans, and they were net buyers of 13,000 contracts of SRW wheat on the week. What's happened in the corn market with regard to the fund and the farmer is remarkable to say the least. So the funds were record net short, 356,000 contracts of corn as of July 21st. They were short 147,000 contracts only as of last Tuesday. So funds were able to cover uh, 209,000 contracts since the third week of July. That's incredible when you consider that December corn futures are only what, 25 cents off of the low. The fund trader, I know you guys don't wanna hear this, played this very, very, very well. Uh, during that same time period, since July 21st, CFTC tracks a, a category of traders that's called the producer. It's like the commercial category. So it's a loose gauge of, of farmer selling, basically. And that category of trader has added 155,000 contracts of net shorts since July 21st. So essentially what's happened here and what the data would indicate is that um, fund buying was offset almost entirely uh, by farmer selling or absorbed by farmer selling. So the fund trader played this thing about as well as you could have possibly played it at the expense of the farmer. And no, I'm not happy to tell you that, but it's the truth based on the data. Um, I know it's not fun, but that's uh, how it's been working, guys. USDA reported a flash sale of soybeans on Friday. U.S. exporters sold 4 million bushels of beans to China for delivery during the 24-25 marketing year. Soybean commitments for the current marketing year are the second worst in the last 10 years. It's less than routine. It's just not what we need to see. There's a lot of negative economic headlines coming out of China. And in, unless there's a, a major Brazilian crop threat, and it's too early to say that the, the dryness or drought right now is major, um, we're going to have a tough time. What did cattle do uh, last, last week? Uh, so last week, uh, live cattle were <clears throat> were an average of 356 higher. Feeders were an average of 670 higher. Pretty positive week. Fat cattle trade was limited and mixed last week. In the Texas Panhandle, cattle sold at 181, which was steady to $1 higher, $1 higher compared to the previous week. In Kansas, cattle were steady to $1 lower at 180 to 181. In Nebraska, cattle were steady at 181 to 182. And then over in the Western Corn Belt, cattle were steady uh, to $2 higher at 182 to 183. Box beef was lower on Friday. Choice ended the day at 304.91. That was down 227. And select ended the day at 294.17. That was down a buck 47. Outside markets are pretty quiet to start the week. US dollars a little bit lower. Um, stock market is mixed. Bonds are unchanged. Uh, gold is down two bucks. Crude oil is up 45 cents in the, in the November WTI at 68.20. Remember, the Fed is out on Wednesday with its rate decision. We should see a cut. We'll talk about that later in the week. Have a great day, guys. Have a great week. We will be back on Tuesday.